Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I'm here to tell you about some books that have made me really, really happy and the reason that I wanted to do that is today is World Mental Health Day um, or is it World he Mental Health Awareness Day, either either or and I have had, still have, uh, mental health ups and downs, we all do I think, um, mine tends to be an anxiety related issue um, that then becomes really bad paranoia where I literally think everyone hates me. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, oh, in some cases, it's probably true. But <laughs> so overall, it's ridiculous what I tell myself. Um, and though I've had experiences of it, I don't feel like I'm personally in the right position necessarily to talk about it, unless it's something you do want me to talk about at some point, but only from my point of view, not as in I'm an expert in any way. And so actually there haven't been many books that I've read about it. There is one that I wanted to mention there before I talk about um, 14 books that have brought me great joy, and that is How to Stay Sane in an Age of Division by Alicia Fack. I talked about this last year when I read it. It's a little pocket book of absolute power. And this actually does look at anxiety and it looks at the world that we're living in now and the pitfalls of it, but how to sort of use those emotions and things as a powerful tool, I guess, more than anything. And um, it's a book that really, really made me think. It made me reassess. It made me look at certain behaviour and certain trigger points and how to deal with both those things. And Elif isn't telling you you have to do anything. She's just talking to you through it and giving some examples, but not necessarily giving the answers. And I think that's brilliant and can't recommend it enough. I did wang on about it. That is the technical term last year. Now onto the books that have just brought me joy, because for me, one of the reasons I don't think I've turned to necessarily many books specifically on mental health when I'm having a bad time with my own is because actually it can be quite trigger inducing and make it worse sometimes, even though I know it's trying to help. So what I tend to do is head to books that are joyful, which is, actually, as I realised going through my bookshelves, a rare genre of books on Simon Savage's shelves. Anyway, one book that I have, or one series of books actually, that I've had um, on my shelves for years and years and years that always bring me joy are uh, Armistead and Morpan's Tales of the City. I didn't quite realise how well this matched there. Anyway, I love these books. I've talked about them very, very recently, so I'll send you to that if you want to, video down below. I'll link it there so if you want to go and find out more. But basically it's about Marianne Singleton who comes to San Francisco in the 70s, it might even be the 60s, and she comes, she's kind of a bit of a country bumpkin and it's how she meets these incredible characters and finds a found family there and what follows on from there for a series of books. I'm rereading them because I'm hosting an event with Armistead in um, Bristol later this month. I have to say I'm a little bit behind. I did start Armistead in autumn so that you can all join in. I will probably do the first video on the first three in the next week or so, possibly ironically around the time that I see him. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, these I always recommend. They always bring me joy. Um, they can be quite out there but it's really the fact that at the heart of them they're about acceptance and celebrating difference and finding your family that isn't your technical family and oh just joyful things and sorry I had to have a fizzy uh break as it were because I've been drinking fizzy pop which is a bad idea before you're filming YouTube videos anyway and um, the next two books kind of come together in the fact that the pursuit of love and love in a cold climate by Nancy Mitford and I love these old editions I know that um if you see my bookshelves they generally tend to look pristine if I've ever shown you the shelves downstairs which are all the books that I have read um and uh, yeah these are on them and I just love them these books made me laugh so much i woke my ex-husband up in bed from the laughter i should add when we were married not any time recently and um, but yeah they're just joyful they follow a very upper class family um back in the now i want to say it's about the time they're written and i can't remember exactly where that was i want to say sort of the 40s maybe 30s 40s um, and it's sort of taking the mickey or taking the piss out of that society and all the characters in there but it's also again celebrating characters that are a bit out there a bit different um and all the uh, random follies that meet them uh, and yeah they're just a real real treat i think nancy mitford was an incredible wit and actually if you want to read Letters Between Six Sisters, edited by Charlotte Mosley, which is all the Mitford sisters writing to each other. That is a joy. It's a doorstop, but it's a doorstop of 
delight. Then on to a Persephone book, and I don't know if I've talked about this on this channel because I read it way, 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 way back many centuries ago, not long after the Bible began. I don't get it, I could start singing because I've been listening to Elaine Page on Sunday with Chris Stone, it's musicals galore. Anyway, this is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson, which is also an amazing film with, I should have said this, the um, the actress Frances McDormand, who reads the first audiobook of Tales in the City. Ooh, there's a link. Um, and it's kind of a Cinderella story, um, and one that just really is delightful the whole way through, and looks at different characters from different classes, and where they can find commonality, but also there's a lot of comedy in where they don't. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was a really, really beautiful, delightful book, and also a beautiful and delightful film. Then we have a book, that, again, another book that has made me laugh out loud, and that's very, 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 very rare, but I do remember absolutely guffawing, guffawing, isn't that a good word, uh, this book, and it's Gold by Dan Rose, which tells of uh, Mayuki, who has come to the UK, and she's ended up in this kind of strange village, which has got lots and lots of bonkers characters within it. Again, lots of sort of people on the periphery of society, or lots of people that are a bit out there and extra but again like all of the books that I've mentioned before celebrates these differences and shows where you can find again commonality this is clearly the theme in books that I really find deeply joyful um but yeah I just thought it was absolutely wonderful and I think there's a is there a myth in this about how she feels like if she doesn't if she sneezes a thousand times with anyone saying bless you you might die and she's heading towards that because coming to England people haven't been as friendly but then eventually she finds herself very much part of rural life joyous another pair of books that I would count as um one really or you know, well, I was going to say one vote this isn't a voting thing this is just me sharing them but you could count them as two books or one um it's uh how, uh, how to Get Alive, Get Alive, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert and also Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Now, I have not included actual age Eve Brown because out of the trilogy, that was my least favourite. I thought these two were absolutely delightful. Um, also, very steamy in parts, but what's not to love about that? And we all need a bit of steamy joy from time to time, don't we? Be it in real life or through the pages of a book. Um, and yeah, I just thought these were fantastic. Um, the... What I like about them as well, actually, is they deal with some quite dark themes, but in a not dark way. Not that they make light of it in any way at all, but they also don't make it the crux of any character. Like the, how can I just describe it? The the flaws in their, no, not even the flaws. The, um, what's happened in their past does not define these characters, even though it does attribute some of the situations in these characters. But overall, just a real joy. Um, I really like the romances. I like the snark. I like the banter. I like the steaminess. I just thought they were really, 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 really great. Um, I read those with Becca in the books and we had a delightful time. I must read more books with Becca. I haven't for ages. And um, then, oh, two actually of, of my favourite authors that, um, all their books have masses of joy in them, but but also kind of slight bittersweetness in their other ones more so than these. And the first of which is The Hoarder by Jess Kidd. Again, another book that makes me laugh out loud or made me laugh out loud, as did himself. Um, and himself actually had a really clever way of making you laugh out loud and then doing something quite dark to kind of counteract it and make you work but this doesn't have that this is much more about the lightness even though there are some dark moments again but they're they're dealt with in a really astute way that the fact that you take it on board but it doesn't make you maudlin you just carry on reading because of the other stuff that's going on. It's about a man called Cathal who is living in a house, he's hoarding, he's keeping lots of secrets, particularly possibly behind one closed door. And it's about, I want to say Maud now, this is where I'm dread, yeah, it is Maud, so I do know what I'm talking about. Um, but I always second guess myself, I don't know if that's the case. By the way, that was my chair, not a comedy pop. Um, Anyway, it's about Maud, although actually that would be out because uh, I do like the fact that Jess Kid makes a lot of jokes around flatulence um, with certain characters. Anyway, um, Maud is looking after him, but Maud's got an extra ability in the fact that she can see saints and some of the saints in this book when they're talking are wickedly, wickedly funny. And I do think this is a wickedly funny book um, and an absolute joy, as is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon, uh, one of my absolute favourite books. I've just got Joanna's new book, which I'm so excited for. It's not until April, but I might have to read it like imminently 
also another book that's matching. Do you realize quite how many books that I have with this color on them? And because I think there's been a few and I can see one little corner of my eye for a video that I'm gonna be making possibly tonight if it doesn't go too dark, if not tomorrow, uh, before I go away. Because I should say, uh, the reason that you're not getting a um, book or the reason that you haven't had a September book haul or September wrap up yet is that they're going live this coming week because this coming week I'm here, I'm in Belfast, I'm in Omer, I'm in Newcastle, I'm in Durham and I'm in Birmingham with a couple of stops very briefly at home at different points. So there we go. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, that's why you're going to get those videos there. Anyway, back to books that make me happy. Also, it seemed like a nice thing to do. Happy books on World Mental Health Awareness Day or World Mental Health Day. Um, anyway, yeah, um, this is about um, a, a small uh, sort of close um, in which is like a small street and cul-de-sac in the UK where um, a woman goes missing and um, or it appears that she has gone missing. And so two young girls go off to investigate and it's about their friendship and how we as a reader get to through their eyes over here adult conversations we know what those conversations really mean the kids don't and again there's some real joyfully dealt with conversations and topics there including some dark ones and again this celebrates people who are on the outside are a little bit different um, and actually I think Joanna said she wanted to make this a book to celebrate the people who don't end, end up on the centre of the dance floor and I think that's a really lovely way of doing it but it is it's just joyous absolutely joyous the last book that made me laugh out loud properly and I'm now going to listen to it again on audio because apparently there's ad libs with the audio book is did I Say That Out Loud by Fee Glover and Jane Garvey. Again, matching with the colours here. Um, and I am so excited because I'm going on tour with them in uh, November and December. I'm just trying to check out. There's one in October, no, there's two in November and one in December. And they, their podcast, fortunately, is just joyous because they can talk, well, they have guests on. They kind of have really, really good, I hate the term banter, why am I using it so much? They just, it's, how can I describe it? It's just so much fun because really, I mean, here it says notes on the chuff of life and that's what the podcast is like too. Like sometimes they can be talking about putting, or recently they've been talking about putting their boilers on for the first time in ages, but also they can talk about things like squirting or it can go anywhere really, the conversation, just like listening into a conversation between two really good friends, kind of putting the world to rights, talking about the chuff of life and all that kind of thing. And this is the book form of it where each one of them takes it in turn to write an essay and the other one responds. And like I said, apparently the audio book has loads and loads of asides and uh, lots of ad libs. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to that. And I just can't wait to go on tour them. I think it's going to be so much fun. Then I was thinking for all of you, all of you out there who love crime, crime isn't necessarily the kind of thing that you would turn to because you want something joyful. Incorrect with the adventures of Maud West. Yeah, again, a book that's slightly on the colour spectrum with this. Um, but yeah, The Adventures of Maud West, Lady Detective, A Remarkable True Story. And this is all about Maud West, as you might have guessed from the title, um, who was a lady detective who went really under the radar by history, but also was a real enigma herself. And you kind of join Susanna Stapleton as she investigates who Maud was and what stories Maud told about herself that were true and which ones she didn't and she embellished and it's just fantastic actually kind of perfect for this time of year it's just a treat and um I could listen to this um again I listened to it before and what I really like is Susanna reads it and she's got this sort of twinkle in her voice is the only way I can describe it it's a little bit wry a little bit and it's just it's just fab um, and I can't recommend that enough. Then a book that I've mentioned a lot this year already, it's one of my favourite books of the year so far, it's Sarah Women's Still Life and genuinely this is a book that is just joy and Sarah said that herself she wanted to write a book that was joyful especially after the last like couple of years she we she'd had not she'd had we'd had um in the UK uh, and just in the world in general and this was pre-pandemic that um she started writing it and it is it's all about found family it's looking at the joy in the everyday and also one of the things that I love most in books is when books celebrate the ordinary and make it extraordinary and she does that fantastically there's lots of mini little stories sometimes they'll happen in the paragraph sometimes they'll happen in the page you go off on adventures it had little ripples of 
Tales of the City in it for me in certain ways, even though this is set in uh, England and Italy, um, po well, uh, during the war and then post-war. And yeah, I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful celebration of life, people, um, again, those who are a little bit out there or seen as different, but why that's fantastic and should be celebrated. So can't recommend it enough. And lastly, we have two uh, graphic novels. Um, and there was actually quite a few graphic novels that I thought about, like The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil, I think is joyful. Um, what other ones I think? There was quite a few different graphic novels. Heartstopper is just one of my absolute favourite series. It's about two boys at school who fall in love, one who is openly gay or has been outed actually, and another who is um, hiding their sexuality at first, they're bisexual, and we follow on from there. It's about to be a series on Netflix, I think. Um, again, what's going on with the colour spectrums with me and these, um, in terms of my favourite colours, um, but I didn't realise it affected my reading so much. Anyway, um, yeah, Boy Meets Boy, Heartstopper, there's four volume now, four volumes now and some spin-off books. And I would say the spin-off books are a little bit, uh, not less joyful, because I still really, really enjoyed them. But some of the darker themes really come to the fore and explored a little bit more around sexuality, eating disorders, mental health and those sort of things. But I'm not saying this is surface level at all, because it's still there. I just, it's dealt with in a, it's a, it's a defter, lighter touch. That's how I would put it. So there we go. And last but not least, The Encyclopedia of Early Earth by Isabel Greenberg. Um, and I just think this is phenomenal. This celebrates storytelling. It celebrates um, culture. It celebrates oral history. It celebrates so many fantastic things and is just pure delight. And yeah, I just, both, it's a delight for the eyes as well as it is for kind of the stories that it tells and, and what it brings to your mind. And it's also a celebration of creativity. Um, and yeah, I just think it is phenomenal. So there we go, 14 or 12, depending if you're gonna keep uh, include some of the pairings that I've made together as one book or two, um, but books that have just made me incredibly happy. I would love, 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 love it. It would make me very, very, very happy indeed if you in the comments below told me which books make you really, really happy and why, and then I will give them a whirl because, as I said before, it's not something that I generally turn to in fiction, but when I'm having a bad mental health time, it's probably just the tonic for the soul that I need. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below all of those. And also, if, you, if there are any books on anxiety that would be good for me when I'm not feeling anxious, but I wanna sort of look into my anxiety a little bit more, but maybe without triggering myself. It's one of the reasons actually, and I talk about this a bit, on the channel. I don't read many books around chronic illness. As somebody who has one, I kind of feel like, oh, maybe I should to make myself more like educated on my own chronic illness, let alone all the different chronic illnesses there are, but, but those people who will understand what I'm going through, even though it's not the same thing. Um, and I just don't because I get sort of, I don't know, um, I worry it'll trigger me, I guess, if I'm being really, really frank. So there we go. Um, I will be back with a haul and a wrap up, both for September, even though I know it's quite until October now. Um, and then hopefully, possibly, we'll be doing a special live something with my mother over the weekend. I will see you all then. Bye.